Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Algebra of Continuous Functions. You must have learned in your younger years about the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division on numbers from the set of real numbers. Well, now it's time to move on to the more general quantities. Algebra of Continuous Functions deals with the use of continuous functions in equations which involves the various binary operations you have studied so. We will now discuss about a composition rule that might not be familiar to you but is very important for the future application. So let's start with the video. Suppose f of x and g of x are two continuous functions at the point x is equal to a. Then we have the following rules. Here are the two important addition and subtraction rules for the continuous functions. If, uh, consider the two functions f of x and g of x. If you add these two functions, it should be continuous at the point x is equal to a. Same concepts apply for subtraction too. The two functions f of x minus g of x is continuous at the point x is equal to a. So these are the two rules. Now let's see the proofs for the two rules. We have to check the continuity of the addition at the point x is equal to a. Therefore, we will need to check for the three conditions of continuity. For the three conditions of continuity, you can refer a previous video where we, dis we discussed the, the definition of the continuity along with the three conditions. All those three conditions has to be satisfied. Note that since the functions f of x and g of x are continuous at the point x is equal to 3, x is equal to a, the three conditions for continuity would automatically be satisfied for them. That is, the very first important condition is the functions at the point a should be defined. f of a and g of a are defined. The second important condition is limit x tends to a for the function f of x is equal to f of a. Let that be k1 and limit x tends to a g of x is equal to g of a. Let that be k2. Using them we can get f of a plus g of a is clearly defined at the point x is equal to a because both f of a and g of a are defined because it satisfies the first condition of the continuity definition. Using the summation law of limits, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. This is the condition we got from the first condition of the continuity. You can just split this and apply the limit. So it would become limit x tends to a of f of x plus limit x tends to a of g of x where this is equal to k1 and this is equal to k2. So we will get k1 plus k2 which implies f of a plus g of a equal to k1 plus k2 which is nothing but limit x tends to a f of x plus g of x. Hence the function f of a x plus g of x is continuous at the point x is equal to a. The proof for the subtraction rule is similar to the proof for the addition rule. For all these steps you just have to replace plus sign with a minus sign. So you can have a glance over the proof for the addition rule. So we are starting with the definition of the continuity. For the continuity the function has to be defined at that point. So here we are taking f of a and g of a are defined and when it comes to limit we are taking k1 and k2 because we wanted to prove we are using these terms and I am starting with the definition. So using the summation law of limits step by step we are proving the continuity. You can do the same thing for the subtraction also. Now we can move on to the other two rules multiplication and division. Let me start with the rules multiplication and division. Here are the third and fourth rule multiplication and division. f of x times g of x is continuous at x is equal to a and f of x over g of x is continuous at x is equal to a provided g of a not equal to 0. In case if it is equal to 0 the denominator would become 0 and the entire thing will turn into an infinity. That's the reason we are excluding this point. Now let us show the proof using the product law of limits. So hope you are all familiar with the product law of limits. The limit of the product is the product of the limits. So we can get, so by the product law, limit of the product is equal to limit of f of x times limit of g of x. This is equal to k1 and this is equal to k2. So k1 times k2 here. Now same way, uh, same the way how we use the product law of limits, we are going to use the quotient law of limits 
Oh, hope you are all familiar with quotient law of limits. It is nothing but limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. I am going to write the explanation. So limit x tends to a of the quotient. I mean the radical f of x over g of x. You can apply the quotient law of limit and take the limit for the numerator and denominator separately. So limit x tends to a for f of x divided by limit x tends to a for g of x which is equal to k1 over k2. Here it should be provided that k, k2 is not equal to 0 so that we can av avoid the denominator equal to 0. Then the proofs will follow similarly. Now take a look at the question 1. Let me take the question and show the applicability of one of these rules. Here is an example. Is the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 and the function is sin x plus x cube plus 5. The given function can be written as, I am just going to group these two and separate trigonometric function. So f of x can be written as sin x plus x cube plus 5. As you can see we have broken down the function f of x into a sum of two independent functions. Let this be g of 1 or g1 of x and this be g2 of x. g1 of x is sin x and g2 of x is x cube plus 5 out of which g1 of x is clearly a trigonometric function and g2 of x is clearly a polynomial function. We know that trigonometric functions like sin x and polynomial functions are continuous at all points in their domain. That is x belongs to the set of all real numbers. Thus f of x is actually a function formed by sum of two continuous functions. Am I right? So at point x is equal to 0, sin x, I mean the g1 of x and g2 of x which is nothing but x cube plus 5 are continuous. So we can use the addition rule. So using the addition rule then we get the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 using the addition rule. Hope you are clear with this example. Same way you can also frame some examples for the other rules too. Subtraction function and multiplication rules. Now we are going to see the third set of rule, composite rules. Following addition, subtraction and multiplication division, we are going to see composition rule. We know the word composition already. Composition of two different functions, f dot g, g dot f. Same concept here. So f of g of x and g of f of x are continuous at x is equal to a. We can prove it very straightforward fashion by showing that there are three conditions of the continuity hold true in this case. Okay, let me take this application, look at the question, the next example. Here is an example, is the function f of x is equal to sin of x cube plus 5 continuous at x is equal to 0. So without going into the trouble of showing the validity of the conditions of continuity here, one can see that this function is formed by the composition of two continuous functions. A, con a function outside and within the parenthesis. Outside function is sine function and inside function is x cube plus 5. So you can say there are two function functions. g1 of x is sine x and g2 of x is the inner function x cube plus 5. So f of x is nothing but you can write this in a composite form. So I am going to write it using g1 of x and g2 of x. Am I right? The inner function is g2 and the outer is g1. So I am rewriting f of x as g1 of g2 of x. Thus by the composition rule. Please read the composition rule. f of g of x or g of f of x are continuous at the point x is equal to a. So by composition rule f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0. This includes our discussion regarding the rules of the continuous functions. All you have to do is just look at the functions given and try to rewrite them in the any one of the form. Either you can rewrite it as a sum of two different functions or a, a difference of two different functions or a product of two different functions or a division of two different functions. So once you try to rearrange it, you can form a new function either in multiplication order, division order, addition or subtraction or the same uh, the like the example that we did just before. You can rewrite the function as a composition also. And then using the proof of the rules, you can explain whether the function is continuous at the point or not. So here are the examples of continuous function. Any polynomial is a continuous function. Rational functions. Rational means quotients with a denominator. And exponential functions are also continuous functions. The natural logarithm functions are also continuous functions. Tan, sine and cos are continuous. Tan is also continuous except at odd multiples of pi over 2. 
where it obviously is not since tan is equal to sin over cos and cos takes on the value of 0 am i right at odd multiples of pi over 2 so you should exclude the tan functions and you should only pick up the other function excluding the odd multiples of pi over 2 so these are the most familiar examples of continuous functions now let us see the properties properties are nothing but the summary of the rules we discussed sum of the continuous functions is a continuous function S difference of the continuous functions is also a continuous function product of the continuous function is also a continuous function quotient of a continuous function is a continuous function except where the denominator is zero so when you are getting a, a fractional type of function you should exclude the number which would make the denominator equal to zero and the composition of the continuous functions is also a continuous function and here is an important theorem on algebra of continuous function please read the statement proof is not necessary because we have already discussed the proofs of the rules for addition subtraction division and multiplication so let f and g be the functions and let a be a real number assume that f and g are continuous at the point a so these are the three conditions if h is equal to summation of two functions then h is a continuous function at a if h is equal to product of f and g then h is continuous at a and if h is equal to division f divided by g and please make sure that g of a is not equal to 0 then h is continuous at a so this is the important theorem on the algebra of continuous functions hope you are clear with the concept of algebra of continuous function in case if you get any query kindly let me know see you in the next video have a